You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning into the Morphology Podcast, aka Murph here to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over. Each week, we'll get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you may wonder, why haven't I done that yet? On this episode, meet Sam Bennett. He is the new face behind the popular website, BicycleTouringPro.com. This website is truly a one-stop shop for anyone into bicycle touring or dreaming of bicycle touring. It's a great how-to resource with blog articles, YouTube videos, books, you name it. For those who might be interested in learning about what it takes to travel by bicycle, and also it's full of information for those who already enjoy the bike touring life. Sam has a strong background in biking, including working in the bicycle industry, and has spent enough time in the saddle to take on the title of Bicycle Touring Pro and the world that Darren Elf created many years ago. Sam is on to share some of his bicycle adventures and to tell us how he's going to move the Bicycle Touring Pro to the next level. So here's Sam. All right, well, with me today is Sam Bennett, the new Bicycle Touring Pro. Hey, Sam. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for doing this. Good. I'm really glad to have you on the podcast and pretty excited at um, this new thing that you're taking on. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. It's uh, It's been really great, and uh, I've got a lot to learn and a lot of people to meet, but um, it's, it's exciting and a lot of fun stuff planned, so... So as I mentioned in the intro, uh, Darren Alf has always been the bicycle touring pro for, I don't know if it's decades, but it's a very long time. <laughs> so he recently moved on, and that gave Sam this great, great, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, entity called Bicycle <laughs> Touring Pro. So do you want to maybe give us a little bit of history on, A, maybe how you came to be a professional biker? And then how you took over this legacy, Darren Elf, started. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So um, I have been a cyclist my entire life, <laughs> basically. Um, I grew up in, in Iowa, and I grew up working in bike shops. Um, so I was a, yeah, I started you know, cleaning bathrooms uh, when I was 13 for discounts on bike stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, um, worked my way up and I, I, I worked at uh, bike shops in a number of different states all across the country. And that was kind of how I got my start. So in addition to loving to ride and stuff, I, I was kind of in the industry that way yeah. um, as a mechanic mostly. And so that's how I, I got my start. And um, you know, it's uh, been a couple of years of doing other things outside of the industry um, as far as you know, my full time career. But uh, this great opportunity came across. Uh, Darren was, you know, looking for someone over the site and I obviously have a passion for this um, <laughs> and love love cycling but also love touring and traveling uh, by bike and so uh, felt like I could bring uh, you know something new and interesting to to the to the platform and so I uh, chatted with Darren for quite a long time and uh, we decided it would be a good fit and here we are so <laughs> that's kind of a little bit of, uh, of my history I guess but excellent and we need to right away like tell the listeners the name of the website because it is a one-stop shop. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's bicycletouringpro.com. And then we also have uh, pretty large platforms on uh, all social media. So so we have a YouTube page uh, that's pretty popular, just Bicycle Touring Pro, and then uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, we also have a podcast uh, for those listening who are interested in uh, you know more podcasts. It's actually very similar to this podcast as far as talking to you know, other bike, bike adventurers yeah. and such. And that's just the bicycle touring pro podcast. So, but yeah, the, the site is really cool. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, just, it's the blog first of all, right. So there are articles on all kinds of subjects, you know, dating back decades. So if you're ever curious or you've got a question about something, you know, chances are we've written about it at some point. Um, and you can use the search function on the site, or if we haven't written about it for some reason, let me know and uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll do that. But <laughs> So we've got the blog and then, um, you know, there's uh, all kinds of just other informational resources on the site. They're all free. Um, you can get a free kind of starter guide for, for bike touring. 
And then we also have a store on the website, um, which I would encourage folks to check out as well. Um, but really what we're known for is the bicycle touring blueprint. And mm -hmm. that's a, it's a book. Uh, it is uh, more than 400 pages. It's really long, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really helpful if you have, whether you've, you're an experienced traveler or you've never done this before and interested, it's a really great place to start. It'll walk you through the whole process, uh, start to finish and answer pretty much every question that you've got. And so we, we sell that on the site. You can buy it as a physical book and I'll mail you one, or you can buy it as an ebook. And then we've got other, you know, books and we sell Ortlieb products on the site too. Mm. And so um, there's uh, there's all kinds of stuff on there. So I'd encourage you to check us out on the site and then on social media as well. Excellent. It's a website that's available, you know, obviously if you're like thinking about getting into bike touring, it's a perfect place to start because there's, like you said, unlimited resources, but it's also a great place to go if you're a seasoned touring person, you know, you can find out new places to go. You can, like you said, you know, read the books and there might be a, some tips that maybe you haven't experienced yet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we try to have something for everybody. Um, I had someone who, you know, I, co I corresponded with on uh, one of our social media platforms, you know, a couple weeks ago, who was like, man, I really hope you guys don't into that new gravel stuff that everyone's talking about. And I was <laughs> like, well, well, sir, I, <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're certainly, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to going forward, there's going to be content about all things, you know, cycling and adventure cycling and touring and traveling. Right. Um, but we really try to be uh, as diverse as possible um, as far as the topics that we talk about and cover, right? So we are not going to become just a gravel cycling website, certainly. Right, right. Um, but there'll be stuff on that because I like to ride my bike on gravel roads. And so sometimes, you know, we'll be writing stuff about that. But certainly our focus is 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 touring and travel. Um, and yeah, you know, really, there are other websites out there, you know, for uh, you know, bike travel and bike packing and this type of thing. But what we really try to do is be that informational how to type resource for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not going to see a lot of, you know, news and gear type stuff on our site. We'll do that from time to time. Right. But it's a lot of that informational how to uh, inspirational, frankly, content for people who uh, are interested in doing this or people who do this already. So. I remember asking Darren when we, him and I did a podcast interview together, and I would love to ask you as well, um, but I asked him to define what bike touring was and <laughs> if he thought there was a difference between bike touring or bike packing. So do you want to tackle that yeah, too? Yeah, absolutely. I guess we'll see what our, my, <laughs> my answer compared to Darren's. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, it's a great question. So, I, and we get it a lot. So, um, bike touring traditionally um, has been, has been around for a long time, right? Um, and bike touring traditionally is just traveling by bicycle, right? <laughs> um, and and what it it looks like, you know, traditionally is you've got a, a bike, obviously, and then it's it's got racks and panniers usually with with all of your gear stored mm -hmm. in those in those big bags hanging off the side, right? That's traditional kind of bike touring. And then bike packing came along. And I think there are a couple of differences, but obviously, you know, they overlap pretty significantly. Right. Um, kind of the first difference is a couple of years ago, maybe 10 years or, or so ago, people started to try to do bike touring, but do it a lot lighter. Right. So try to do it without the big heavy racks and the big panniers hanging off the side. Right. And so um, companies came out with bags that were, uh, you know, focused more on the frame mm -hmm. without having to add those those and stuff on the side so that's where you see the frame bags and those big bags that hang off the, the the saddle right handlebar bags and then so that's kind of the first difference is just um kind of the way that gear is traditionally carried right um typically people try to carry a little bit less gear right it's a little more minimalist mm -hmm. um again a lot more about about weight um the other difference is kind of the the terrain i guess uh, bike touring, I would say traditionally, and again, this is going to change and depending on who you are and where you're going and right. stuff, but traditionally has been more on like paved roads, right? But bike packing, I would say, uh, you know, is a little bit more focused on kind of off road, more rugged type riding. Um, so you might have a bike that's got more tire clearance, you know, uh, a little bit knobbier tires, just a little bit more uh, diverse and rugged in the, the landscapes um, that, that you're riding, again, traditionally. So I'd say those are the, the main differences. Um, but again, they're, they're both riding and traveling by bicycle, and that's all that really matters. It's just about kind of the approach 
um, that you take as far as, you know, the, the bike and the gear that you're carrying. Ah, well said, very well said. <laughs> and I, um, I do both extensively and yeah, it's kind of like, um, it's the exact mindset you just described. Like when I am bike packing, you know, usually I'm going on terrain that's a little bit more rough. I don't want yep. as much weight on my bike. So, you know, instead of bringing three jackets, I'll just bring one and then, mm -hmm. you know, try and talk myself into being okay that I might <laughs> wear the same jacket more than once. Where when I am uh, touring, it's I still try and minim minimize but I sure. know that I, you know, if you have four panniers on your bike and one of them isn't really like full to the brim, my brain, whether it's right or wrong, will like, well, maybe I will put a few more items in my <laughs> yep. bike. Like, you know, you want a few luxuries, right? Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and what, you know, what I tell people is like it, uh, and, and, and frankly, and, and maybe some of the, the companies that, you know, are out there may not appreciate this, but. Um, it, it doesn't have to be black and white, right? Right, right. <laughs> you don't have to have a bike packing bike and a touring bike, and you don't have to have all the bags, right? Uh, it, it's whatever works best for you, right? If you've got one bike and you're trying to figure out the best setup for you, right? Maybe it is uh, a hybrid of the two where you've got a frame bag, but you've also got a front or rear rack, right? Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be black or white. Um, it, it's just kind of whatever makes sense to you. There are obviously benefits to both, right? Uh, it's great to have less weight on your bike that you've got to carry up hills and mountains and stuff. Right. Um, but it's also nice to have some of those luxuries sometimes. And so it's going to be, you know, up to each individual person on kind of what you need. And that really just comes from experience and, you know, getting advice from other people um, on kind of what has worked best for them. Yes, so. yes. And uh, like when you mentioned, you know, luxuries, uh, when I am bike touring, like one of the luxuries I always take with me are a set of Uno cards. Because um, yeah. when we're, you know, there, there's a group of us pedaling, you know, we'll get to our campground and set up camp. And then, you know, once it's dark, it's like you just sit around the fire or do something. And so usually somebody has some sort of lantern and just to be able to play Uno regardless of where we are is kind of fun and you know it's not it doesn't take up a lot of room but if I'm bike packing where to put a set of uno cards can become pretty yeah. dramatic so <laughs> it doesn't always get to go on the trips with me but do you have any luxury items that you are always taking with you yeah absolutely so um it's a, it's a great question I I don't end up having too many luxuries um you know I'm a young guy and I can sleep well pretty much anywhere <laughs> yeah. you know don't get don't get as many of the aches and pains that i know a lot of people do riding um i would say i i i like to bring like a nice lantern um you know to kind of hang in the tent at, at night yeah uh, i also love to read when i'm on the road and so um i always try to bring um i've got like an ipad that i can read on or like a an e-reader it's really nice to have mm -hmm. um it, it's obviously a lot lighter and easier than carrying like an actual physical book, which you're just never going to have the room for. Right. Right. And right. So that's why I love, you know, reading on a, on an iPad or on a, a Kindle. Um, so those I would say are my, my luxuries. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they make Uno cards electronically where we could all just play on our I'm phones. I'm sure there's some kind of electronic yeah. Uno game, um, but I've never looked into that. Yeah. So I might have to, have to figure that out. I'll have to research that. And if, if it does exist, I'll put it in the show notes in case there anyone else wants to try electronic uno but anyway okay back to you <laughs> okay knowing that you live in iowa that you're a fellow iowan um i don't know if you're a hawkeye or a cyclone but i'll say go hawks uh, yeah fair enough I, I won't i won't take a side in that okay in that okay good 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 <laughs> um but knowing that you are in iowa i'm sure that you dabble in gravel but do you cycle year round yeah, pretty much. You know, obviously it, it changes a little bit in the winter. Right? Yes, and I, yes. I certainly don't get as many miles in the winter. But yeah, I, I try to get out uh, when possible in the winter. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing uh, some some winter riding content for the site and the YouTube page uh, this winter, uh, getting out there a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I try to uh, as much as possible. But you know how the winters are here. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes. So <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. So outside of Iowa, where have you pedaled within the United States? Yeah, I've been, uh, quite a few places around the United States. I have been to every state. I'd love to go to Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Oh yes, me too. Um, but I, I, I need to get there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many states, but I've been to quite a few, <laughs> most of them, I would say. Um, and I've ridden a bike in most of them. I would say like favorites for me 
Um, I mean, Iowa is obviously beautiful. Yes, um, yes. I know it's not on anyone's uh, list, but the sunsets here are incredible. I, riding on an Iowa gravel road and the sun's going down, it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. So um, I know it's not on anyone's bucket list probably, but uh, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> as far as kind of other, like I would say, under the radar places to ride um, in the United States, um, Oregon is absolutely beautiful, mm. especially like Eastern Oregon. Um, you get into the mountains and the forests. It's just incredible. But all of Oregon is beautiful. Um, and I would say um, n- no one ever thinks about it, but South Dakota um, oh. can be really beautiful, especially over by the Black Hills. Uh-huh. Um, there's some great riding in there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just say, you know, um, and then I, I guess I should add one last one. Uh, North Carolina and the Blue Ridge Mountains mm. um, are just absolutely beautiful. It is truly, the, it lives up to the name, you know, the the colors in, in the mountains, especially, you know, when the sun is shining a certain way, is just unbeatable. Um, and the riding there is really, really great. So I, I just encourage people to maybe get off the beaten path a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, there are obviously tons of great places to ride in, in the United States. And everybody kind of goes to like Colorado uh, when they want to go on a biking trip and there are so many so many great places um around the country that maybe aren't as popular and i just encourage people to try to find those off beaten path places a little bit too and the three places that you mentioned all have pretty major elevation so you you pick some challenging places <laughs> to call your favorites yeah i like i like hills certainly <laughs> um but that's that's a personal thing but um yeah i i i, I do enjoy you know, some elevation and what a lot of people don't realize too is that you know iowa's pretty flat but if you get onto like iowa gravel um as you know um yes. you know because they're gravel uh gravel roads they don't have to comply with the normal road regulations as far as uh you know steep steepness of hills and things so you can get some pretty some pretty significant, you know, tough, tough hills, even in states that are considered more flat. Oh, so. for sure. Yes. And as your title as um, bicycle touring pro, you have to just, or maybe I'll say it and you elaborate on it, but just how epic it is to ride anywhere in the United States. Because I, as, I, as I've toured through different states here and there, it's just amazing the different terrain and like you said, the beauty and you've got, you know, elevation and there's just so much to see and how different it is via bicycle versus car. A quick interruption to tell you this week's podcast is sponsored by Lizard Lips Lip Balm. These great lip balms contain natural ingredients, come in a variety of flavors, and you can choose certified organic or balms with sun protection. Check it out at lizardlips.net. Now back to the show. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it's such a big and diverse country. Um, and I know a lot of people who live here know that, but um, there's, there's just, there's so much to see. And when you are driving or, or flying, especially, you just miss so much of, of the beauty and the diversity, mm-hmm. right? And there's just, a, as, as I'm sure you know, and most people listening know, there's just a satisfaction that you can get from, you know, uh, traveling under your own power, right? Um, and just being out in, uh, in the elements, you know, whatever they may be. Um, and so I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of the people listening to this probably are avid cyclists, but mm-hmm, I just encourage right. people to get out there as much as possible um, because um, it really is uh, incredible, an incredible way to see a country and a place and get to know uh, the people too. Yes, and back to your comment about South Dakota, I have the Mickelson Trail on my to-do list or bike it list for 2023. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, exploring a little bit in South Dakota. Yeah, absolutely. I've never done that trail. I'll have to look it up. But yeah. um, South Dakota is is beautiful. Obviously, probably would not recommend going in the winter um, right, right. <laughs> when the weather is a little bit better. Um, it is beautiful. And again, just one of those like kind of off the beaten path places that you're probably not going to see a ton of cyclists, mm-hmm. um, but it is really, really beautiful. Um, if you can get there, it's it's a little bit tough to get there too, depending on where you're from. But um, for us, Ireland, it's not too long of a trip. Um, or mm-hmm. you can just ride your there, you know. Um, yeah, there so. you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about biking outside of the U.S.? Have you done any of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and that's that's one of the most rewarding things, in my opinion. You know, I haven't, I can't say I've been to as many countries as Darren has over the years. That's certainly my goal <laughs> for the future. Um, but I would say uh, a couple of countries that I really, really enjoy. Um, first of all, especially for folks in the United States, is Mexico. 
so many people oh. I feel like don't think about Mexico enough as like a cycling destination, right? right? Everybody wants to go to Europe and Europe is beautiful, but we've got this incredible country just very close to here. It's very cheap to get to, right? Um, you know, culturally, there are definitely similarities, right? Um, it's, it's very easy if you're an American um, to, you know, get a visa there, you know, to, to travel and, and visit. And it's just a, it's incredibly culturally diverse country. Hmm. And it's also an incredible place to ride a bike. Um, there are uh, oh. the most beautiful beaches in the world in Mexico, and it's got mountains too, right? <laughs> not, not quite like the Rockies, but um, right. there are, there's plenty of elevation in Mexico. It's got beautiful cities and beautiful culture. Mexico City is one of the world's best cities. It's got small villages that are incredible up in the mountains. Um, I just made a video yesterday um, that is not is not live yet about riding in Oaxaca, Mexico, which is a beautiful um, small town in Mexico known mm. for its uh, it's kind of like the food capital of Mexico. Um, and I was riding just outside of Oaxaca and I got bit by a dog. Oh, um, no. And so I've got a YouTube video coming out about that. Everything is OK. I don't have rabies. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that, that was a not so great experience in Mexico. But um, it, there's just there's so much beauty and, and diversity in Mexico. And again, if you're in the United States, it's a really easy trip um, to, to get there and would highly, highly recommend um, Mexico. Um, the other place that I've really enjoyed is is Spain. And that's also relatively easy to get to from the United States. Flights are generally relatively, relatively cheap because on the, the uh, westernmost part of, of, of Europe. Um, but Spain is, is, is almost similar, right? Like there's some of the best beaches in the world along the east and the south of the country. And then um, really incredible mountains. And uh, Barcelona uh, is probably my favorite city in the world, both just as a city, but also for biking. Um, and so, uh, Spain is also one that I absolutely love riding in. Wow. Okay. I've got to put both of those on my list now. <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing the Southern tier this past spring, we spent, oh uh, gosh, weeks in Texas and we were right mm -hmm. along the border. So I can agree with you. I mean, it's so beautiful in Southern Texas and, you know, obviously in a lot of those places, there was just a... Um, you know, the, there was no wall, so to speak, so you could yep. see into Mexico, and it was just as beautiful. So I can only imagine, you know, visiting some of the places there on bike. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I try to focus on, you know, places that are also relatively easily accessible for people, right? Um, I, you know, I, I have never been to Central Asia, for example. Um, <laughs> I, it's on my list to, to tour through you know, that part of the world, but also um, it, it's, I think it's kind of intimidating uh, being that far away, <laughs> you know, for a lot of people mm -hmm. and getting there is also tough. You know, if you're in, you know, Western Europe, the United States or Canada, the UK, where a lot of our audience is from, but, you know, I, so I try to focus on places that are relatively easily accessible for people mm -hmm. as well. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, Mexico is just, just one of those. Um, and so highly, highly recommend it. If you need, need advice or tips, just, uh, you know, reach out and let me know. So. Yeah. And the nice thing with Mexico is, you know, we share a border, so you literally yep. could bike there if you, you wanted could. to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you absolutely could. Yep. Um, the other thing I guess I'd say about Mexico while we're on the topic, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are worried about how hot it is. Um, and it is hot in certain places, but a lot of Mexico is at a really high elevation. And, and so th that really helps with the, the heat issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Mexico City, for example, is uh, a lot of people don't realize it's it's really high up. It's at like 7,000 feet. Oh, it's really? one of the highest, biggest cities in the world. Yeah. And so it's not that hot when you're up that high, you know? Um, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's warm and hospitable, you know, most of the time, but um, it's not, you know, 110 degrees everywhere all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mexico City for, especially is, uh, you know, really hospitable generally. Um, and so a lot of the country is like that, right? There are definitely very hot places in Mexico, right? Um, but a lot of the country is at a higher elevation, which helps. And then the other part of the country is right along the coast where it's pretty, pretty mild as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's not necessarily riding through, you know, a desert where it's 110 degrees everywhere. Okay. All right. Well, I'm assuming that there are photographs or an article or an article in the works on this very topic of yes, Mexico. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Check out the site for sure. Okay, so back to bike touring specifically, do you have any, like, let's give us your opinion. 
Do you see or know of like common mistakes people make when bike touring? I, I can tell you yeah, absolutely. many mistakes I've made, but I'd love to know your opinion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, I, I'd say a couple of things. First of all, I think the biggest mistake is uh, analysis paralysis mm. um, is what I, what I like to call it. Um, and just not getting out there. Right. Um, I, there are a lot of people who, you know, follow the site and, and the YouTube page, you know, and are on our email list for a long time. And they've always wanted to do this. But they've never really like got out there and done it. And, you just got to do it, you know, like you just got to yeah. get out there. Um, a lot of people, um, like I said, they're, they're, they're so focused on, you know, making sure it's the perfect trip and they've got everything they need. And the first thing I say is just, just go do it. Even if it's just an overnight trip or a couple of days, right. Just get out there and do it. Um, and you're going to learn these things along the way. And that's part of the fun. That's part of the, you know, the exposure mm -hmm. um, that, that's so great about this is is learning how to deal with issues as they come up, right? Because you're going to have issues. I still have problems and issues when I ride right, my bike. Right. I know Darren did after doing this for 20 years, right? Um, nothing's ever going to be perfect when you're traveling this way, but that's part of the satisfaction that you get from it is working through issues as they come up, right? Having things not be perfect and having to deal with it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's the first thing I'd say is just like the, the biggest mistake I see a lot of people make is just not getting out there and doing it as soon as possible. <laughs> um, so if you're listening to this and you've never done a trip or something and you're always wanted to just do it, yes. you know, you can visit our site, you can read all you need on there, you know, pick up the book. If you really feel like you need to, you know, you get some how to type content before you go out, but just do it, whether it's, you know, again, just an overnight or trip from your house or book a flight somewhere and do it, just get out there. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing I'd say. Um, and then the next thing I'd say is <laughs> it, it's almost the opposite. Um, and so I, I don't want these two things to be taken, you know, in, in conjunction necessarily, <laughs> okay. but um, <laughs> it's also good to be prepared. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, depending on where you're riding. Right. Um, so, it, you know, if you're if you're just riding, you know, in your state where you're from or around, you know, your town or your city or your state, you know, I, I'd say get out there and do it as quickly as possible. When you're going on a little bit longer trip, um, it is good to make sure that, you know, you're prepared with everything you need and, you know, you're you know how to sleep in your tent. Right. <laughs> um, you know how to fix your bike if you have a, a mechanical issue. Right. Um, and so those types of things, it's also good, especially if you're going on a longer trip, right? Um, I think a basic bike maintenance um, is something that's really important for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I'm excited to do for the site and the YouTube page coming up. So uh, make sure you're following and subscribing there and you'll be able to see some of that, some of that content. Because especially if you're in a foreign country or a place you're not as familiar with and you have a bike issue, um, and you're in the middle of nowhere, right? Like your bike is obviously, you know, how you, how you get from place to place. So right, right. you need to have some basic level of knowledge to be able to fix things on your own. Um, and so that's, that's something that's really, really important for people. Um, and again, I'm hopefully, uh, going to be doing some more content on that to help folks with that as well. Um, but yeah, I just, just say for, for longer trips, especially making sure you have some of that basic knowledge making sure you've done some shorter trips first, right? <laughs> uh, I, there are definitely people out there who, who you know, they, they see the people who bike across the world or bike across Europe, right? And they just want to jump in straight to that. Um, make sure you do a couple of those shorter trips first, um, even if it's just around where you're from, um, even if it's, you know, do, do a trip where you go out for a week first, you know, and make sure that, um, first of all, you actually are enjoying this because, <laughs> right. you know, there yeah. are, there are it, it can get lonely out there on the bike, right? You need to make sure that, um, you know, you can deal with the elements, making sure that you know how to sleep in your tent. You know, that's a skill that it takes developed, is developed over time. And so just make sure that, you know, again, especially for those longer trips that you've, you've done some shorter trips and you've kind of done your due diligence and built up some of those skills that are important uh, ahead of time. Awesome suggestions. And um, you're, you're so right on just simple things like, you know, bike maintenance, like, I don't know how to, you know, change out my blah bitty blah or what to do if my <laughs> blah bitty blah breaks, but I can do enough that, you know, if my chain snaps, um, I have a little tool that I can, you know, yep. figure out how to make my bike, you know, just one gear and I can hobble my way to the next community or I know how to change a tire, you know, just, I don't need to know the ins and outs of every single piece of my bike, but... I know enough to get me, um, hopefully, to a 
place that someone else can fix it. But, and you, you know, it's exactly. 2022. So we have the, the extra tool of like YouTube, you know, you could be like yep. YouTube, how to change a tire. And you'll have 3000 options on how to <laughs> learn how to change yep. a tire. But if you're in the right, the wrong place where there's no reception, um, you have to rely on what's in your own brain. You know, you are your you are your own resource. So that is an excellent, excellent tip. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I'm I'm gonna try to do some. I've had gotten this request from people, <laughs> um, and so I'm gonna try to do some more videos and, and such on, you know, maintenance specific for people who are traveling by bike, you mm-hmm. know, or going on extended trips because it also is a little bit different. A lot of it is. I, I consider it almost kind of like uh, emergency medicine in a way, right? Compared yeah, to other types yeah. of medicine, right? You know, you you don't you don't have necessarily the luxury of time, or you know, maybe all the tools available or a specialist. So you just need to figure out a way to like stop the bleeding, right? And, yes. and and you can get to a place where you can get more you can get more support from you know a mechanic or get the parts you need, right? And so it, it's a little bit, I would say, uh, a different approach when you're on the road and you have something mm-hmm. happen because. You know, usually it's just you flipping your bike over, trying to make something work till you get to the next town, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. So I'm going to be doing some more stuff on that in the future. So would really encourage folks to, you know, subscribe so they don't miss those in the future. Good. Okay. And I'll add uh, my common mistake to that. And it is uh, carrying too much gear. And yep. <laughs> uh, the, the best example is, um, let's say you take a weekend, you know, tour, um, you don't even have to go on month long or week long, but take a weekend tour. And then before you, you know, unload all your, or how about when you unload all of your gear after you get back home, make note of the things, the pieces of clothing, the items that you never touched while you were gone. Yep. And do Absolutely. not put them back in your bag on the next trip. Like, <laughs> um, you know, like you have to have the basics. You should always have enough food and water to get you further than you think you're going. Because, you know, like you said, if you have a mechanical problem and let's say you're stuck, you have to camp somewhere an extra day, you got to have the basics, right? Yep. Um, and of course you should have, let's say it rains or you, you fall into a lake, you need to have <laughs> extra clothes that are will get you dry again. But you like I mentioned earlier, you don't need four pairs of socks for a two day event or you know three <laughs> jackets like it's it and maybe it's just maybe I'm the only one that thinks that way, but I have really had some um internal struggles when I pack like it's just like do not put that in your bag, so I've been uh, working on that and and luckily I've adapted enough that now I can go bike packing which far fewer places to shove things and it's worked out beautifully. <laughs> so yeah, what's, what's really great about, uh, about touring is you really learn uh, exactly what you do and do not need. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we all, we all enjoy sometimes the luxuries of life and I can choose which pair of 20 pairs of socks I want to put on in the morning. Right. right. Um, but I don't need 20 pairs of socks. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Um, and, and, and you really learn um, in the exact things that you need to take with you. And then you kind of get back home and you start to look around and like, do I really need all this stuff? Right, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, and, and so it's a, it, it's a good exercise and kind of uh, almost minimalism in your personal life too. Right. Like I'm the same as anyone else. I've got a couple bikes. Do I need all these bikes? No, but I enjoy it. Right. But um, it's, you, there are definitely, I, I think we all could benefit from, you know, more minimalism in our mm-hmm. lives and trying to enjoy um, enjoy the outdoors, enjoy the things that make us happy and, you know, buy less stuff. Um, and so uh, that's something I appreciate about, about touring as well. It's just, it really forces you, um, to, to really, uh, understand exactly what you need to, to get by and be happy. So. Well said. Yes. So, okay, let's look forward. We've got the bicycle touring pro Sam Bennett Tell us your future. Like, are you going to be traveling? Are you going to be creating content? Like, what's your future hold? Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully both of those things uh, in conjunction. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I, 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 there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, new cool stuff, hopefully, for, for the site. So there's certainly be a lot of new articles and content on the website working on, um, you know, some potentially new products to add to the store and things like that. Um, be a lot of new YouTube content, certainly, mm-hmm. um, coming, coming ahead. 
Um, we're doing a lot more podcasts. I have had some really good uh, podcast conversations we've recorded over the last couple of weeks. The first one was just released uh, earlier this week, um, which I highly recommend people check out. So expanding kind of all those things. And then, yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting out on the road and, you know, creating some content uh, around that. And so um, that's that's really exciting for me, certainly. The other thing that I'm interested in doing, though, is, uh, you know, highlighting other people that are doing this. Right. And so mm-hmm. doing that not only through the podcast, but on the website and the YouTube page. And so, um, you know, certainly I've got friends that are writing you know, around the world and highlighting videos and, and content from them um, about their journeys and adventures. So I really want this to be a community forward type of platform mm-hmm. as well, um, because I think that we all learn best by learning from each other. And um, I, I I like to think that I've got some information to share, but I don't have all the answers and I haven't been everywhere, but I probably know people who, who have. And so certainly we're encouraged folks if, they're, if they don't follow already to, to do that. And then Also reach out and let me know about your trips and your adventures. And we're always looking for guest posts on the site and and things like that. So I really do want to hear from people. And, you know, like I said, I want this to be a community focused type of of platform. And I definitely feel that sense of community when I visit Bicycle Touring Pro website. So you've you've already (laughs) you've nailed it. And I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Um, will you, you tell the listeners one more time where they can go to see whether it's YouTube videos or a website or all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the website is bicycletouringpro.com, and I'm sure uh, you'll be putting things in the show notes as well. <laughs> um, but yes. bicycletouringpro.com, um, and that's kind of the main the main platform. You know, we have the the tour shop on there, and then all the articles and information. Uh, available and then uh, the YouTube page is just Bicycle Touring Pro. Um, Instagram is at Bicycle Touring Pro. Facebook is at Bicycle Touring Pro, and so um, <laughs> you can find us pretty much anywhere at Bicycle Touring Pro. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, also you know send me an email. Um, my email is Sam at Bicycle Touring Pro. I give it out to people. I want to hear from you. You know, uh, if you've got questions, comments, you know, if you had a trip recently and want to share photos, I, I'd love to hear. And so feel free to reach out uh, by email as, as well. And there's a contact form on the website too, if you want to do it through there. So yeah, that's uh, that's us. And I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from you. So Great. Well, it is nice to know you, Sam, the Bicycle Touring Pro. And uh, I can speak on everyone who's listening that we're really excited to you know, have you along on our bike journeys of life. And uh, we hope to see a lot of cool stuff. Thank you. I'm really excited. So thanks for the opportunity. And uh, again, we're uh, really looking forward to getting to know some of your audience as well, hopefully. So great. Thanks, Sam. All right. Thanks. Well, that's it for this week. A few great deals to send your way. Use code Murphology at hammerhead.io to get a free heart rate monitor with your crew, too. And a shout out to Lily Trotter's Compression Socks. Use code MURPHOLOGY to get 20% off your purchase of the best compression socks. Also use code PRIMALMURF for 20% off your Primal Wear cycling gear at primalwear.com. Of course, email me at morphologypodcast at gmail.com if you have a topic or the name of a cyclist you find interesting. Support my podcast at patreon.com slash morphology and visit my facebook instagram and website for daily entertainment i have more great episodes in the pipeline so i hope you continue to be a morphology podcast listener